Hey there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things, and today I'm going to talk about a game that should not exist. Have you ever heard of the game The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends? I hear you shouting at the screen right now saying, yes, of course I have. Well, everybody except that guy, he's talking on his phone while the video's playing. Dude, you could pause the video while you're on your phone. It was a game that, if you go way back to 1992, was released on the Game Boy, the NES, and the Super NES, and the Mega Drive. Of course, this is all true, and that's where most people know this game from. But if you jump back in time another nine years to 1983... There was a game of the same name being developed for the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision. It was never released. But I have a copy of it right here. So let's go plug this into my Atari, see if it works, and find out a little bit more about this game that should not exist. I have my later edition Atari 2600 running through the cable box so I can capture some footage. This one tends to work better running through the cable box for capturing footage than my old, uh, older version of the Atari 2600. So we're using that today and I've got my adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and friends. Let's plug her in and see if this cartridge even works. And it works, so let's play some Rocky, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. The idea of this game is that Boris and Natasha are robbing a train. As the valuables are thrown up in the air, Rocky must collect them and give them to Bullwinkle for safekeeping. Bullwinkle is flying in the plane, Boris is on the train, and Natasha is in a helicopter... I think shooting down at you there's a combination of two symbols on the bottom of the screen that if you get more time is added to the countdown clock if you hit Natasha's bullets you lose control for a few seconds let's switch to an emulator for a better picture There is another mode that you switch to with the color black and white switch. It turns this into a math game where you must make a number equal to the one on the bottom. All of the treasures become number signs and plus and minus signs. This mode is a lot harder than the first one. I've not played the later releases of this game, but from the videos I watched, they're very different from this one. This is a single screen game where, as the newer ones, look more like a scrolling platformer game. So, what happened with this game in the 80s? This game was originally developed by Mattel to be released on the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision. It was designed and programmed by Steve Crandall, and the music and sound was done by Patricia Lewis DeLong. The Atari 2600 version was the first to be developed. It was finished, it passed everything needed for release, but then was cancelled for no apparent reason. The Intellivision version was still scheduled to be released, but before that date, Mattel closed down their video game division. So this game is one that was never officially released, and the ROM was never officially released to the public due to copyright reasons. So I hear you asking, if it was never officially released, how did I get a copy? Well, I bought this off someone at this year's VCF Midwest. And where did he get it? Well, I did ask him that. And he said that he was at a, another retro computer show and someone was selling copies. I asked him which one it was, he couldn't remember. So someone obviously made their own cartridge and put the ROM for this game on it. 
The ROM is available on the internet if you search around for it. So, what do I think of this game? I would say it's definitely targeted at a younger audience. Obviously the kids that would be watching the cartoon of the same name. And I guess in the game, Boris and Natasha must be using some sort of anti-gravity ray to make everything float up? Aside from that, it's a fairly simple game and does get repetitive very quickly. Although, as I said, this is targeted at a younger audience, and I don't think my 10-year-old self would get tired of it very quickly. Let's ask him. 10-year-old me, how did you like this game? It's fun, but I want to play as Boris so I can steal the treasure. Well, okay then. I guess my 10-year-old self has some issues. Getting back to the game, from a programming point of view, it's amazing how many things they manage to get moving around on the screen at once. Natasha in the helicopter, Bullwinkle in the plane, Rocky, the train, which does have a puff of smoke coming out of it, Natasha's... Uh, bullets, I guess they are, and all of the treasures as well as a countdown clock. This is a lot for an Atari 2600 game. As for the sound, it has a catchy little tune at the start, but quickly moves into the sound of the train chugging along and the blips when you pick something up. I would say the sound is not at all bad for this game. All in all, I would say this is a good game for younger players and worth taking a look at for people who want to see a lot of things going on on an Atari 2600 screen. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends for the Atari 2600. A ROM that should not exist and a cartridge that should not exist, at least publicly anyway. Now I don't want to get into a debate of the legality of this being out in the world. But I, for one, am happy that it is. Because if this ROM had not been released and this cartridge had not been made, I'm not sure which came first, whether the cartridge was made and the ROM was taken from that, or whether the ROM was released and somebody made a cartridge from that. But if this had not been released to the world, this is a game that would be lost forever. And this is a snapshot of the time in video game history, in computing history. Whether it's a good game or it's a bad game, I'm glad that it exists. All right, well, that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget that a like, a subscribe, and a comment below are all things that help the channel out a lot and are greatly appreciated. And I would love to hear if you have ever come across a copy of this game, this version of this game, um, out there in the wild. And uh, what did you think of it? Put that down in the comments. All right, well, that is everything. And until next time, have yourself a great day.